Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be going over the questions 1 through 5 on the international exam from 2021 and this is for AP Physics 1. Alright, so question 1 states the incomplete data in the table above was recorded during an experiment in which two carts are set on a frictionless one-dimensional track and they collide head-on. Right, so that's the first thing you want to note down is that they collide head-on. Uh, what are the magnitudes of the average force exerted on cart 2 and the average acceleration of cart 2 after the collision? So since these two carts collided, collided head-on, right? So we have our two cars, and then they're going to collide in the middle. Uh, the force that they both experience and exert is going to be the same, right? They're going to experience the same force because for every action, there's going to be an equal and opposite uh, force uh, according to Newton's third law. And so because of this, we're given the average force experienced by cart 1, which is 30 newtons. And so for some of all the forces equals ma, which we can use to find the acceleration. So we know the average force already is going to be 30 newtons. So we can eliminate all the choices without 30 newtons. So it's either B or C. And then we just plug in the mass, which is given here, 0 0.5 kilograms for cart 2. And solve for A our acceleration, which would be 60 meters per second. So our choice, uh, answer is, is choice C. It's a pretty simple there. All right, question two. So the figure above represent, represents a top view of a bar that can pivot around point O. Arrows represent equal forces, so forces of equal magnitude, that can be exerted near the ends of the bar in the direction shown. Which of the following forces, when exerted together, would produce a torque around point O of the greatest magnitude. So they are exerted together and they would produce a torque. All right, so the torque equation is torque equals distance from the pivot point or the radius, um, the perpendicular force, and we'll throw sine theta in. So the force uh, tells us is going to be equal magnitude. So this is going to stay constant for all these. Um, so we want to take into account direction distance from the pivot point, and angle if we need to. So yeah, let's just take into direction first, and we can see for choice B, that it's not going to be choice B, because um, force 1 is acting uh, counterclockwise, force 3 is acting clockwise, and so they are opposing forces, which doesn't really make sense if you're trying to oppose the uh, most torque. Um, so if we look at the answer choices, we can see that the distance from O to 1 and 2 versus the distance from O to 3, 4, and 5 is is less, right? So the distance from O to this is greater than this to this. So that R value is going to be greater, which exerts more torque. So it's a good chance that 3, 4, and 5 are going to produce more torque than 1 and 2. Um, so if you look at the answer choices here, 1 and 2 together, not going to be the right one. 1 and 4 might be the right one. However, 4 and 5, they both have a greater distance a greater R value, right? So that's going to exert more torque than the other one. All right, number three. A one kilogram block can slide along frictionless track shown above. A student moves the block along the track so that the block has the same speed at point A, B, and point C. The work done by the student on the block as it moves from A to C is most nearly what? Um, okay, so this is a conservation of energy. And I'm pretty sure we can observe it from the gravitational potential energy standpoint. So energy initial equals energy final, right? And then let's just say MGH equals MGH, right? And however, the final energy is also going to have uh, what is going to be work, right? And this work is going to be basically energy loss to say friction, air resistance, or just in general. Okay, so from what I can tell, the mass is gonna be constant, so mass is just gonna be one. The gravitational constant is 9.8, and so we can just multiply that by the height, two equals the mass is constant, a gravitational constant, and then the height of 0 0.8, and plus work. So these two have to balance out because the uh, speed is the same, and so we end up getting work is equivalent to 12 joules. Um, so the answer choice is C, but you might be like, that's negative 12 joules, right? That doesn't really make any sense. 
Um, that's because it's negative work, and it's negative work because the force that the uh, the student is uh, exerting is sort of not allowing the block to accelerate. So if you think about it, if you just let this block accelerate due to gravity, it's going to go faster and faster, right? Um, because that kinetic energy is going to ramp up from all that potential energy from you dropping it from two meters. And so the, the student opposing that block's motion is going to be a force that's going to go this way. But the block, the block's displacement is going to move the other way, like this. So whenever you have uh, these opposing forces, it's going to result in negative work. All right, question four. Or we should probably read the thing above it. So a clay block of mass 2m is moving horizontally with speed vo just before colliding with the block of mass m as shown above it's suspended and it swings to maximum height ho from the initial position and ho is greater than l and the block oscillates about its lowest position okay so basically we have this clay block it hits this uh, mass right here they stick together and this thing is going to swing to a position that is higher than l and this is like h over something okay that's cool so four says which of the following quantities is the same immediately after the collision and at the instant the block reaches the new height okay so choice a says linear momentum of the clay block system uh so linear momentum isn't necessarily conserved here because there's external forces right the force of gravity so it can't be a B says the angular momentum of the clay block system about the top of the string. Uh, it's a similar case here. I don't think it's B because um, when you're talking about torque, you're also going to have the external force of gravity, right? So that's going to not conserve that angular momentum. C says total mechanical energy of the clay block system might be it. D says total mechanical energy of the clay block earth system. So... Yeah, it's definitely between these two answer choices, and the answer will be D, because when when this uh, ball is sort of just coming towards that pendulum uh, system, it has uh, initial velocity, and so it's kinetic energy, right? So that kinetic energy is going to be converted to potential energy. Um, however, all that energy... There's going to be some energy that's lost of friction and air resistance. And so energy is technically not conserved within the clay block system. Um, and it's going to osculate, right? And it's not a perfect system as you want it to be. However, D says the total mechanical energy of the clay block earth system. So even if energy is lost to the air, right? That energy is still maintained within the earth. And because of that, let's say the potential energy increases as the block goes up the potential energy of the uh, other system is going to decrease in order to balance that out. So the answer choice there is D. For five, it says if the experiment is repeated, but the initial speed of the clay ball is double the velocity, the period of osculation of the block would be most nearly what? So the equation for period of osculation of a pendulum is that... 2 pi multiplied by length of the string over g, gravitational constant. So if we look at our equation, the the, the velocity really has nothing to uh, affect it, right? It's not going to affect the length of the string. It's not going to affect the gravitational constant at all. Um, so our answer here is going to be choice B. Uh, you can also look at through the lens of how it would affect the other uh the other variables, right? So if you have a greater velocity, right, this, let me just draw this. So this is our block. Actually, it should be straight when it hits. This is, this is our block. This is the ball, it comes super fast and it hits it, right? So this ball, if it sticks, or this clay ball, whatever thing, sticks to the block and it, it's coming faster. And so if it sticks to it, the entire system is going to move with a greater velocity, right? So if it moves with a greater velocity, but its period of osculation would, would stay the same, or if you didn't know that the period of os osculation would stay the same, you would know that the amplitude would change. So the amplitude is going to go greater now, right? This amplitude is going to be greater uh, simply because you have a greater velocity. So you have more energy 
uh, the kinetic energy can be converted to uh, potential energy, which has to obviously be greater because you have more energy to start with. And so because of that, you can assume that the period of osculation would be the same because if your amplitude is greater, it takes you more time, but you have a greater speed to offset uh, that variable as well. So yeah, that does it for these five questions.